Welcome. I hope everyone has got a little bit of food and a beverage, let your whistle, and be re-energized for our headliner. Again, this club, Heart to Heart, is very unique in that it is one of the very few clubs that actually invite speakers from the outside to share and give longer presentations on their field of expertise. And we always like having people who are here to share about improving our communication in the field of relationships. And so to introduce tonight's headliner, I'm going to introduce, I'd like you all to welcome Cynthia Stott. Your story goes from your head to your heart. 
building the relationships out into the world. I'm curious, who in this room is an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur? A small biz a business owner, a speaker, an author. Okay. And who in this room is a wife, a mother, a father, a brother, a caregiver? Yes, we all are. And we all are balancing all of those labels, all of those jobs, all of those statistics that we have to do this, we have to do that. The stories that are behind all of that. I would like to give you a little acronym around how you can think of story. And we have a little handout. Pass that, pass that, please. <laughs> My lovely assistant. your story. The S is for what you decide you're, you're going to share. The T is that you're telling your truth. The O is that you own this story. And the R, you receive the wisdom of this story. And you remember, it's all about you. That when you go back to telling your truth, it's the fact that you are the only one who can tell your story from your perspective. There may be others who are involved, but they can't tell it from the inside out the way you can. Last summer, my mother was in the hospital, and I'm one of six siblings. And three of my sisters and I were at the hospital, and I was writing my blog. And my youngest sister is 10 years younger than me. And we were in the lounge, and so I, I thought, OK, I'm talking about her. I'm talking about all of us. But I, she's here, and I will let her preview it. But I normally don't do that. Because she had made a comment about another blog I had written about Mother's Day weekend where our father would take my mother out for the day. So she would have a free day away from the rest of us. And my sister made, said, you made it sound like you had to take care of us all the time. Because I, I mentioned that I had to make sure that everybody had lunch, that everybody was healthy for the day. And we lived on a farm. And we had chores to do. We had things that had to be taken care of. And did I mention that she's 10 years younger than me? <laughs> so she has a totally different perspective of being the oldest girl and the youngest girl. The baby who got away with everything. So I was a little, you know, do I let her read this or do I just publish it? So I, I let her read it, but I also let her know, this is my story. You are totally given permission to write your own story when you want to share that. And she was kind of like, yeah, but you are. <laughs> OK. So that is my example of how we still have to stand in our authenticity when we're dealing with loved ones, quote unquote, <laughs> who are reading our stuff. And sharing our story. That we take a stand that this is happening to me, and I'm the only one that can tell what's going on from the inside out. I know how absolutely fearless I was about getting back my life after I was diagnosed for the second time. The first time, I wanted to jump back into my life as quickly as possible. 
being the supporting player for everyone else in my life, that I took on my invisible role. Because that's what they expected. They expected me to be supporting everything that they wanted to do, to be putting on more miles than the Daytona 500 driver because I was a stay-at-home mom. <laughs> However, <laughs> I, I loved being a mom, but that wasn't just my identity. I've always wanted to be a writer. I grew up a child of the 50s, so I was watching Donna Reed <laughs> vacuuming in the kitchen, wearing her pearls, making a pot roast in the kitchen and always giving advice to family and friends and you know, just taking care of everybody. And at the same time, Irma Bombeck was writing her column in the back bedroom. And my brothers and I would fight over who got to read her column first. Because she was writing about stuff that we knew about. She was writing about real life, her family. That's the kind of writing I wanted to do. And she gave me permission to think about, I could do that kind of thing. And that's why I became the humor editor of the Adams Tiger Tales. Because her philosophy was if you can learn to laugh about it, you can learn to live with it. And that's how I decided that I was going to tell stories, but not stories that were in depth discovery of this this disease or, or that, I wanted to talk about people's lives. What mattered to them? Why it was important that when I was a little girl, I wanted to be a writer. And I started keeping a journal when I was 11. And I still get passionate about it because that older brother would look for it so he could tease me about it. And it, I wasn't writing anything that was deep and dark. I was mostly copying poetry. I was mostly talking about who I had a crush on on TV. But it was my stuff. And that's how I work with the clients who come to me and want to know, how do I make the leap from this is what I'm passionate about and making a relationship with the ones who are reading my stuff. And I tell them, you talk about what's here. Because then they will know you have this going on too. That there's a connection. And because I am passionate about helping you make the connection, I decided that we're going to do a little exercise. <laughs> and similar to table topics, <laughs> everybody gets there, and, every, and everybody gets their own question. And you can decide. Um, take, yeah, take one and pass it around. So this is similar to my writing prompts that I have on my blog every Friday. I send out an idea of what you can write about for five minutes. So this is an idea for you to Think about what's going on in your life and how can you connect this incident with something in the world at large. It may be a headline, it may be a movie, it may be something that you read in a magazine. It, it may be something that has been just, I really want to talk about this, but I don't know how. I don't know how to make it. And you'd be amazed the way some things can just open up. That when you give it a chance to gel, that you realize there is a thread. Yeah. And the thread is me. So now that everyone has something, you want to take a couple, you know, 30 seconds for you to think about what is your hook, 
what is it that speaks to you about that prompt? And then I would invite one or two volunteers to stand and give us their story. <laughs> and, uh, don't ask me to sing. Sister Judith thought I was flat. <laughs> no, I still love to sing. Are you asking people to stand now? If you're ready, I would love to. Woo! <laughs> oh,
means more to me than anything else. We say one more. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he must have liked what he got. <laughs> My first car. Oh. <laughs> was nada. Because <laughs> it was a Ford Granada. Oh. <laughs> Fix or repair daily. Now, I have to remember, this was, I don't want to give the year away, but it was an A-track player in the car. <laughs> and I had to squeeze a matchbook on top of the tape to keep it playing. Oh, and in order to move the front seat, everybody had to, who was in the front seat, had to do it together. <laughs> The coolest thing I remember about Nada was I had learned how to roll a joint <laughs> using no hands on the driving wheel and wedge the steering wheel in between my thighs so I could actually drive without putting any hands on the wheel. And that's what I remember best about Nada. <laughs>
why you have one mouth and two ears. <laughs> and two eyes. But to really listen, to pay attention, so that you can respond and ascertain what it is that your audience is waiting to hear from you. That even before they can articulate, this is what I need, you have presented them with options of how you can deliver it. I have been so blessed to be able to work with a variety of clients who are my friends to help entrepreneurs, to help speakers, to help authors, to help people who want to tell their story. I had one gentleman who came to me and said my mother was a refugee from World War II. She has a great story, but her English is I will come and interview her. And we'll just sit and have tea. She'll be having a conversation with me, and I will create the legacy for you. I delivered it to him. He gave it to her. And three weeks later, she came back and said, can I have 10 more of those? Because <laughs> <laughs> she decided she wanted to give them away as presents. I helped her tell her story, and that's all I do, is help the people who come to me ready to tell their story, create the content, and help them mold it into whatever way they want to present it out into the world so that their readers understand who they are, what they do, and why they are the people that Mary, is it like a song? What does S stand for? I, is, huh? Yes, dear. Oh. So it's it's your story, what you want to share. It's telling your truth. It's owning your story. That you're open to receiving what the story has to tell you. And that's all about you. I'm sorry, what's the R again? Receiving. Receiving, thank you. And what it has to tell
of writing, your dreams of speaking, of publishing, where, where it is that you're stuck. And to let go of the story that's keeping you back and unleashing from that story that isn't allowing you to speak up, your voice to be heard, and you to be taking your place in the world. Um, I invite you to entertain the idea of me speaking to any groups that you're involved in. Love being able to talk to groups of, about living a life unleashed and telling your story, telling your story. And I have a special for uh, you to be able to craft your signature message to our intensive that I would love to talk to you about. Okay, pause you. And that's a recorded. It is. So any questions for Mary about writing your story, telling your story? <clears throat> Would you be uh, um, up to, uh, I'd like to create a video and, and about uh, Emmyville politics. And, uh, I could use some assistance and I wonder if that's something you would do. What, do you mean a script or? Uh, it's. Uh, Basically, a political message. I'm a candidate in this election, but I'm not really trying to win, but I really want to put a message out there. Oh, you're a candidate? I served 24 years on the council, so I, I want to put some things out there that people should know. And so I think there's some misunderstanding about things that I've done and things that I've been trying to do, and I would like to put out a clarifying video. And, uh, so it sounds like you would be somebody who could help with that as well as maybe be a part of it. If that's we definitely have a conversation about that, absolutely. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And there's a place to put your name and email yes. and all that. Yes. Okay. Great. Tiny, did you have a question? Yeah, I have a question. Um, it's interesting to say everybody has their own story to tell, but a lot of times in our lives, we are broken. And those are hard stories for us to tell ourselves, let alone yes. anybody else. But those are where lessons are learned. How do you convince someone to tell the brokenness in their lives? I can't convince anybody to do anything that they're not ready to do. I can create a safe space, and I am compassionate. And I don't, I don't push. I keep asking and going deeper, but if they're not ready, then it's not appropriate. I'm not a dig, dig, dig kind of uh, writer. I am someone who will help you excavate when you're ready to explore. I am someone who is an architect when you're ready to build. Um, I'm someone who is a champion when you're ready to tell it. But if you're broken and you need a professional counselor, that's that's where the story breaks. And then when you're ready to share it in a way that's going to be the palm that helps you move forward. I can help you craft something for wherever it goes. But, um, and I'm here to help you tell what you want to tell. And Mary, that safe space you create, is, it really is a safe space. And a space where you feel like you can, like I can tell you, Mary, and, and get it out, and then we can decide how much I'm going to share. Because you don't want to share what you're really bleeding from, and you want to be able to decide how you want to share it, how you want to even position yourself, even though it's authentic. So sometimes it's about sharing and pulling it out, and it has to sit there for a minute. Yeah, I mean, not, not to pick at an open wound, but if it's something that is going to be helpful for you to address it, and helpful for you to see how 
how is how is this going to benefit me and the people that I'm here to help? So being able to just the way I, I use the example of one in eight women. That's a statistic. I'm not a statistic. I'm somebody who is passionate and gets weepy about how passionate I am. And that's my strength. Sometimes telling the story that hurts gets you past it. Because it can be better to talk about something than to let fester. Because once you pull it out of the darkness and into the light, it's not going to eat at you anymore. I've learned this through the years that you have to let go of the bad things that happen, or they'll color your whole life, and it's not worth it. It's not going to open you up to what else is available. That's right. Okay. Questions? I am willing to comment that um, this is heart to heart conversation going on here, mm -hmm. which is the title of our club. Mm -hmm. And uh, I haven't experienced that in any other club, so I just wanted to point out that. Can I have one question? Not so much on the content, but does it make a difference in the medium? Like, he just asked to help. I'm not sure if you're asking to do a film, but, you know, does writing, does it make a difference? Like, if I were saying it in front of a camera, or if I actually took time to help me write it, or it was just a conversation, you know, whatever, whatever it is that needs to be said, does it make a difference how it's being communicated? Oh, the so your question is, does it make a difference, the delivery? Well, well um, the, the, the medium. The medium, the medium, the medium. like how to deliver the That's message. Right, yeah, I mean, I, I think it would be different for me to watch he, him speaking to me here in this live space, like being on stage or doing a movie or reading his book. I mean, those are all ways that we can uh, see Moby Dick, right? Right, mm. and so it's, it's whether you want to be in the room, feel the heartbeat of taking a breath and are the knees knocking, uh, how, what are the hand gestures going about, to be in that genuine, you know, the, the real life as it happens moment, or the option of working on the raw data that's just doing a download and, and a free write for the cleaned up edited version that has all of the T's dotted, and, yeah, T's crossed, and I's dotted, and the colon and the semicolon in the right place. Or the video that took 300 takes. Now, it's what you want as your final product what you want your audience to experience. Granted, it takes more out of you to be in front of an audience. And it depends on how big the audience is. You can reach more people if you put a comment on Facebook. 
you can reach more people if you, you're willing to be on Twitter. And they're showing that YouTube videos get obscene amounts of hits. So getting your message out there in a multiple avenue of ways is going to be your best bet. But to have the connection, the heart-to-heart -heart connection, this is when it happens in, in a room that you can see the, the facial expressions. You can, you can watch them go, what did she just say? Mm -hmm. Or I, leaning in, it's like, I, I understand that and I, I, I want to know more. So if that's helpful, it's, it's what you want to say and how, how cosmetic you want it to be. Because, you know, some things look pretty slick. Think about the Super Bowl commercials. All the money that goes into them and how long they are. But how much their people are willing to pay. Those companies are willing to pay because they know the audience is going to be there. That's a story. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Before we close, I'm going to ask our president to close us out. Have some